Welcome to this chapter. It's time to implement some code and get your OpenID Connect and OAuth standards to work in your Flutter application. All right, so I hope that you reviewed the previous videos which we talked about the theory behind the standards of OpenID Connect and OAuth. If you have not checked them yet, I strongly recommend you to watch them because it gives you a good understanding of the standard and you might have a better time implementing these codes because you understand what's going on behind the scenes. With no hesitation, let's get it started. Uh, it's time to walk you through to the MJ Coffee app that I already built, but I want to add authentication and authorization for different parts of the application uh, together with you. So let's uh, move on to this uh, application and I will show you how the app is structured. If you look at the uh, right now, the Explorer, you will see that we're going to have the main dot dart, which has everything for starting the application. Nothing very fancy. It's just purely a uh, flutter that you probably already know. We have the router. I'm going to use Go router as a package to implement my, yes, you are right, to implement my navigation too. And a Go router gives me a, something called redirect, which is a very good thing to handle the unauthorized routing. So we're going to do this together in a few uh, episodes. Then we're going to have a bunch of widgets. They're just simple widgets uh, scaffolding different area. We have some services that I created, but they have not implemented anything yet. So you see that they are like a singleton. They're just returning instance. And yet there are something that we need to implement here. And then, then we have the chat service, which uh, this is one of the things that we're going to do together. We're going to implement a chat system that requires you to grab a production ready token in order to run your application for production. We're going to do this together with us zero action. This is exciting. And then we have the team service to just have the dark and light mode, you know, uh, something here and then we have some uh, screens um, community home details profile I'll show you here on the uh, emulator as well we're gonna have the coffees uh, just a normal model and some helpers here but let's uh, take a look at the application as soon as I run the application you will see that you have a home page um, some funds and you have this button you click and then it goes to uh, to this list which is a list of coffee you can go to each coffee you can change and add to basket well it's not completed yet but this is the idea you have the support page for chat and also for agents later you will learn in this uh, series and then you're going to have this profile for logging out. And one funny thing here is that I also implemented dark mode because I like dark mode. Maybe I will work with you on dark mode instead of uh, light. So then uh, we're going to go and log out. So this is here. So what we're going to do right now here is this sign in, to be honest, is just right uh, redirect. So let's take a look at the code here. So in the home page where I implemented this, if I move on to the login button, here is the button, and then I have this outlined, which is just now calling my service login. And if I go to uh, us service login, the implementation here is simply to change the log state to true. And here's a funny thing because now go router allows me let's take a look at go router quickly here router i will open it here for you if the go router allows me right now with redirect to kind of listen to let's say this uh, you know state on my login uh, auth service and then say if the uh, logging is let's say something like that I want 
to redirect to some particular route or if it's user not authenticated, let's say, just go to another route. Here is where I handle this logic. And in fact, it's working pretty well because when I set this to, well, true, it's just going to this route. And if I even if I refresh, it, be, it will stay to this page. However, I have not implemented the caching and, you know, things like that. So if you refresh, it will just go away. We will do that throughout the course together. So here is the way that now with go router package you can manage to have um, yeah, you know your uh, authenticated your protected routing be accessible uh, without having a proper authentication right so this is uh, the way that you can probably do here it's a fairly simple logic at the moment but you definitely can go ahead and uh, do that uh, like make it much better but one thing that you need notice is that I am actually listening to this uh, login info, which is a class of my uh, no change notifier. So now I have this, and if it's changing, then all the listener will take uh, take in, take into account and then it react. And that's the reason whenever the login state is changing, there is a, a refreshed listenable where you can listen to this state, the change notifier. And once I say this is login, then the Go router will go to this redirect and, you know, redirect to proper page. You don't need to call anything. So the Go router will handle that for you, right? This is fantastic. I wanted to mention this because this is important. It makes your application works much cleaner. Uh, so now instead of me going to like my widget or somewhere else and say, hey, Navigator, now after success, go there. I don't care. I just change my state in my application layer, maybe in the state management or maybe in my service, which I created, and then everything will work, right? So the architecture of this application is also very simple. So I have only technically two layers, is presentation and my services. Of course, it's better to have another layer maybe in between like have a data layer and application layer and presentation layer. Or maybe if you have any preference for your architecture, you can change that. What we will do, though, is we will definitely go ahead and refactor this application throughout the course and add Riverpod to um, the application as another layer where you see how we can handle different states. But as of now, we will stick to these two layers, to the services as a singleton that I created and to the simple state that I created, um, which is extending change notifier. So if you have not uh, also uh, seen my video about Go Router, we have, I actually pair a program with the author of Go Router, Chris Sells. He is a former um, Google uh, employee working on Flutter as a product manager. And uh, he paired program with me way back when he was in Google and also created this package. The, the link to the video is probably somewhere here on top. I will add that or also we'll add it to the description. You can go and watch that and you learn Go Router uh, much more extensively. So it's a very fantastic package. Now it's an official package for navigation to uh, supported by Flutter team itself. If you now go to Go Router on pop.dev, you definitely see this is supported by Flutter team right now, not uh, uh, not anymore. Chris <laughs> um, cells. So it's very simple. You define your route with this class Go Route. You name it or you path it, and then you will build your application. That's pretty much it. You can have nested, routed, and so on and so forth. So the code is fairly straightforward. I'm not going to go through this because this course is not about Go Router. You can watch my other videos, but I will use Go Router as my routing. And if I go back to my main.dart, you'll see that Go Router gives me the delegate as well as the information parser. And I also implemented Leak uh, Flex Team Data, Flex uh, uh, or um, from the package. Uh, 
uh, flex color scheme by my good friend Mike. Uh, he is author of this package. I also have a pair programming video with him. You can go to uh, another link here right now or my description. Uh, go there and look at that, uh, you know, video to get uh, an understanding of flex uh, color theme. Now it's even a Flutter favorite package. It's an interesting package. Definitely go and check that out. I use that because I wanted to implement uh, some coloring and also theming. I just didn't want to spend so much time to define my own coloring. So I just use what he's providing with the package. Quite happy with that. You see, I have dark mode, light mode working pretty well everywhere. So we're going to stick to this right now. And uh, that's pretty much it. Now you have a good understanding of the project overview. You know that how things are going to work. We're going to have only one page for authenticated routing and another page, you know, when we're going to have, uh, you know, other uh, when user is logged in like this one and maybe this one. Uh, you will have, you know, these pages after login and that is handled by Go Router and Navigation 2. With that said, I think you're ready to jump into the implementation of OAuth. What we're going to do in the next video, we will quickly go through the sign in and sign up. We will implement um, an uh, Open ID Connect uh, standard and with, together with OAuth um, uh, backend uh, using OAuth0. And uh, we get our application to work quickly. And you'll see how easy is that. Um, if you have not watched my theory for the OAuth and OpenID Connect, and you know you need to understand that for sure, and go back, check out my other videos, which I published. It's mostly theory, and I try to explain very easy and uh, you know uh, digestible. So hopefully you understand the standard OpenID and OAuth. Uh, uh, 2.0. So then if you understand that, you understand different flows, you understand Pixie, then you are pretty much in a good hand and you can come back to these uh, other videos. Let's get started and see you in the next video.